In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. There's a cartoon that has a, uh, was on for many years, and um, there is one part of the cartoon that always stuck out in my head, uh, this one scene where the, the family was trying to prove that the son in the family was dumber than a hamster. So, has somebody seen this already? Okay. Um, so what they did is they took this hamster and they had it in a cage and they had a little piece of cheese and they electrified the cheese. And the hamster came up to eat the cheese and it got electrified and then it went in the corner of the cage and just stood there and shook. It did not approach that anymore. Then for the brother, they made this beautiful cupcake and they electrified this cupcake and it had a sign on it, do not touch. And the brother kept going up to the cupcake and he's grabbing it, ow! He, ow, he kept grabbing it over and over and over. And there's this whole scene about how he kept grabbing this cupcake and he didn't learn his lesson that the cupcake was electrified. And even though it had the wires and the batteries sitting on the table and the sign that said, do not touch, he kept, ow, 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 over and over and over. In other words, trying to make something happen that was not going to happen. In today's gospel reading, we hear about something that God wants to happen And we're also reminded about the things that he doesn't want to happen in our lives. Now, what are some of the things that God doesn't want us to do? Well, historically, in the Old Testament, we see how God stops someone from achieving something that they're trying desperately to do. Just like this boy in this cartoon trying to grab this cupcake, he could not put two and two together that this was not going to work for him. In the in the time of Christ, we see that there's two major events with Christ and with St. John where God says, no, this is not going to happen. The first is when the children were being killed by Herod under a certain age. Remember this? When they were looking for Christ and they said, kill all the children. And they couldn't find Christ because Christ was protected and told, and Joseph, uh, St. Joseph was told by the angel to leave and to go somewhere else and to hide and then come back. And we also see with uh, St. Elizabeth, the mother of St. John the Baptist, that they come looking for St. John and, they, and Elizabeth took St. John into the desert, into the wilderness. And it says that she was hiding from the soldiers in this cave had opened up and she went inside the cave and she dies in the wilderness and St. John grows alone in the wilderness by himself that's why he's shown with the very ragged clothes with the long hair and that we read that he ate locusts and wild honey is because he grew up just being guided by the angels but what happened in those two events God said no You're not going to kill Christ, and you are not going to kill St. John the Baptist. No matter what the leadership did, they could not get these two biblical figures. Christ was protected, and he was guided through the voice of God and through the angels, even being a little child, that he was not going to be apprehended. And the same thing with St. John the Baptist. What are some of the things that God wants that he does make happen? And today in the gospel reading, we hear about this. We hear about this vineyard and we hear about the tenants and and it doesn't really, you know, you hear about it and you're like, it's a parable. So it has a deeper meaning as we know with all the parables. But what does this really say to all of us is when God wants something to happen, he will make it happen no matter what. Even to the point of putting himself in the midst of whatever that situation is to make it happen. And if he doesn't want it to happen, It's not going to happen. So today in the gospel reading with the the vineyard, what is this speaking about? It's speaking about God making this vineyard. In other words, making the world. He makes the world, and what does he do? It says he lets it out to tenants. What does that mean? He creates us, human beings. He puts us in this vineyard that he makes. And then he says, let me go at some point and just make sure that they're producing the fruit of the vineyard. In other words, that they're doing good things. So who does he send? He sends people like Moses, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, St. John the Baptist even. 
He sends the prophets, Isaiah, Zechariah. He sends all Amos, all these prophets, and many of them are up in the dome. He sends them, and what do they do? They kill them. They, they cast them out. They behead St. John. They kill many of the prophets. So he mentions that, and he says they send the first set of servants. They, didn't, they beat one, killed another, and stoned another. In other words, he's referencing to the ones he sent to give the message to the people. And then what does he do? It says he sends even more. So what happens? We read the Old Testament, and more and more comes out from the prophets, telling about the, the life of the, the people and the needs of the people that, that they're supposed to follow God's words. He sends even more. And what do they do? They do the same to them. So then what does he say in the gospel reading? So he sends his son and says, surely, surely these tenants will respect my son. And they say, let's kill him and get his inheritance. In other words, let's kill Christ and let's do our own thing. This is ours. A very worldly perspective that continues to this day. Let's do what's good for us and forget about everybody else. So when we hear this gospel reading, we hear about Christ saying, this is my intent. The intent of God is to get the message to his people, to get them to grow, to get them to produce the fruit. Now, what's the fruit? St. Paul speaks about the fruit of the Spirit, that some people have the fruit of discernment, some have the fruit of teaching, some have these different gifts that come from God. But God requires them of us, our talents, we're not supposed to bury our talents. We've all heard that gospel reading about taking the things that we do and just kind of putting them under the car carpet. But we're required and called to pull them out, to develop them, and to use them for the betterment of everyone, for the betterment of the people sitting next to you, to the betterment of the people who live in your home, and to the betterment of your own soul as well. We're called to develop those things, to make them grow. And that's how we give God the fruit that is due to him, the, the vine dresser, the one who plants the vineyard. That's why we have the grapes here in the front on the, on the vine. We have it up on the top. <clears throat> because Christ says, I am the vine. I am the vine. And if you live in the vine, you grow. But anything that doesn't, and doesn't bear fruit, just like anyone who has a rose bush or even uh, grapevines in your yard, you trim it back. And sometimes you cut it back pretty far so that it will grow. And we all know, I've mentioned this before, about St. John the Baptist has in every icon the axe to remind us of that too. Every icon you see of St. John, there'll be an axe because he is the one that says it'll be chopped back. In other words, we are the vine. We're the vine of, of the church. In fact, even on vestments, there's grapes on vestments, because it's that important to understand this gospel reading for today, that we live and abide in the vine. There's no separate shoots. It's one vine, and it has a, uh, the root, and it comes out, and it bears fruit. And if it doesn't bear fruit, it's cut back, and it's thrown into the fire. So how does this tie into us? What does this have to do with the cupcake that I mentioned in the beginning? It's because sometimes we don't quite understand what God wants for us, and what he doesn't want for us. And we might fight against that. We might fight against things and hit a wall over and over and over and feel that pain of this is electrified, it's, it's, something's not working, it's not working, it's not working. And then we prayerfully realize that this is not the direction God wants us to go. He wants us to go in a different direction. And when he wants us to go into a different direction, everything opens up. For those of you in your life who have have had some door open up and you said, you know, the door opened up and it just worked out perfect. Everything just worked according to plan. That's God guiding us. And then there's other things where we hit a wall over and over and over and we just don't understand why that is. Now that's not to say that everything in our life should be absolutely easy and should be absolutely perfect and rosy and people throwing flowers at our feet. No, even the life of Christ was faced with many uh, torments against him, temptations that uh, not only were directed to him, but also affected his disciples. But this gospel reading today reminds us that God has a plan for every one of us that is exactly the same. There's 
side plans and side things that we do, but the main plan that God has for us is to produce the fruit that we're called to produce. And it's different for everybody. Not everybody's a grape, not everybody's an apple or an orange. Everybody has different things. You all have different things that you do. And, you know, looking out at you, I know what your backgrounds are for many of you. I know what you do for a living. I know what you did for a living. I know some of your talents and and those things, and it's different. And that's what makes us, as St. Paul says, the body of Christ. Not everybody's a hand, not everybody's a foot, not everybody's a head, but together, we come together to make the body of Christ. And what are we called to do is to produce the fruits, to dig up our talents, to use the things that God has given us for his glory and for the benefit of his church. And when I say his church, I don't mean the walls, I mean the church, us all of us in the church, the people of the church. So as we go forward and as we start this new ecclesiastical year, which start on, started on September 1st, um, it's a time for us to look at our lives and say, what do we do? What are the things that you do that are gifts that God has given you? And what are, the, are you using those things for his benefit? Are you using them for the glory of God or are you just pushing them aside and and hearing from other people hey you know what you should do you're really good at this you should be doing this and we say ah, no, I don't I don't I, you know we see that all the time people just kind of slough it off and say I'm not going to do that prayerfully listen to what God is telling you to do and what he has given you is the gifts and use them for his glory so as we start a new ecclesiastical year start a new year of looking at yourself and offering yourself up to God and realizing there's some things that he's putting a wall up for, and there's some things that he has the door wide open. May you find that wide open door, and may you move closer through that doorway to him always.